cut into that is working also. Good. Perfecto. So how I do know that? Uh, we're doing pretty good. Uh, it's the last day ah. of the conference, and, uh, and 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 it's been up and down, but we've made it through. So so we're grateful. And how are you doing? Well, just recently, a few minutes ago, well, we have been together here with Sam Asmanagic and uh, Konstantin Kolotkov. Sam has come from Bosnia, right, to St. Petersburg, and he has a presentation of his new book in Russian. Uh huh. Just the day before, and today we met here, just we made an arrangement for a new, very interesting project. Uh, project uh, for investigation of uh, Bosnian pyramids and their effect on human health. Well, uh, details and mechanism of spiritual development and other interesting aspects. Uh, in So together with a uh, scientific approach, so using... Uh, uh, Valeri, I want you to hold that thought until we start recording this, because everyone's on break and they're coming back in a few minutes. So okay. I don't want you to forget this, what you're saying now. We will then talk about this again. I'm making a note of it. And okay. Yeah, that was your... F sorry about that. I just... That's I know okay. it's, it's important, so... Hello. Hello, Valerie. Hello. This is Miles from Pusey, and we welcome you to Bases 2016. We've got you back on the big screen. You've got Sandra here, and she's going to do the interview. My name is Miles, and we welcome you to the Bases Project live in front of a live audience here. And thank you, sir. We will now start the presentation and interview. And you are welcome, sir. Absolutely. Can we close the curtain in the yeah, back we'll and then that. and then? Get quiet here. <laughs> right, we're ready. So, you were saying that your friend came after publishing his book, but first let's introduce ourselves. Let's, let's do it in a, in a logical order. So, uh, thank you so much, Valeri, again, to take part of the bases. This time it's a conference, it's part of a live audience here. We have a pretty generous audience. And... Uh, and we're going to sort of just go with the flow again, like last time. We had a good discussion. I have some questions prepared here from myself and accumulated from people. And uh, I'm going to, of course, let you take the lead because you have un unbelievable amount of information. And uh, so Valeri uh, Uvarov is... Uh, he has, a, he has a pretty broad background. I'll just do a keyword introduction to you. Uh, he's the head of the St. Petersburg UFO uh, Academy. His uh, sort of expertise and, and life work is on ancient uh, civilizations and technology. Uh, <clears throat> that's in a nutshell. There's more to it. I'm going to let you finish that and, and continue your introduction, but a little bit about my background, why I'm, I'm involved in this is, uh, as well. I, uh, as a recent, I'm, I'm trying to better understand this topic. Uh, I'm a psychologist by qualifications. I'm a counselor. Uh, my name is Sandra DeRoy. You can find me on Facebook, which will be added to the link. So D-A-R-O-Y, Sandra, as you hear it. And uh, uh, a lot of uh, information that Valeri talks about as well, I integrate into my writing because I'm an indie movie maker. And I'm going to be uh, sort of re releasing my first feature film soon. So this is a very important topic to me as well. So, right, Valeri, up to you now. First of all, I'd like to say thank you for the invitation. And I'd like to embrace all the audience from Russia and say hello, nice to, nice to see you, nice to meet you. And uh, so, if you have got questions, I'm open and ready to answer. Absolutely. So, I have, I have here sort of key, key uh, topics. I'm going to open up the avenue. Um, so pretty much if your research is based on ancient civilizations, 
and uh, predominantly your passion and, and, and what you deal with uh, to help humanity is with ancient technology. You are, um, you, you deal with the wands of Horus and self-built uh, pyramids. Uh, I don't have them right here in order, but let's start with the, let, let's, let's ask you what is new with the wands of uh, Horus. Uh, I own a couple of sets myself. I own the Bia and Mono uh, set. There are different Monos, uh, I believe. And, uh, and I just wanted to know what is new with that and what is the difference between the smaller self-built pyramids and, and how can that help one in uh, self-development and, and sort of heal, healing? Okay, from the beginning, I'd like to give you uh, to the audience a little bit more information about myself. So from the beginning, many years, I have been involved in UFO research on a military basis, and, uh, and I had access to the information which was mostly closed. So, and then step up uh, by step, um, I came to understanding and conclusion that to uh, better understand the problem, the present problems of our civilization, which actually took place with our civilization within the last 15,000 years, uh, we need to know the prehistory of our civilization, what actually happened with us. I'm not talking mostly about what we can learn from the schools or universities. I'm talking about different history which we can find in very special documents in the archives. And fortunately, these documents are opened. And this year in Russia, we have a chance to work with more and more uh, military documents. And also keep in mind that in Russian hermitage, uh, we have a lot of boxes which have been, you know, installed there 150 years ago and they were not opened yet and only this year and last year these boxes started to be opened uh, started to, to make kind of catalogs and it's a lot of interesting information so in general it gave me first of all kind of an impulse a deep interest in ancient technologies because it has a direct connection with what we consider to be a proper spiritual development. It's critically important for all of us. And I'd like to point out especially that uh, now we can speak about it as the knowledge and as technology which we could use or can use now practically for our daily life. And also, if we would just take into account the fact which is clearly described in all, all ancient texts, that knowledge and information have been received by former civilization from the direct contact which they had with ETs which were living not in far situated outer space. That was ETs from Mars and Maldek. And important is that the level of civilization was very high. Information have been written scientifically and we can understand clearly what this information and messages are about. And actually, as I told before, now we can use it daily for our practical life. So, and coming along the way of an investigation, I came across many years ago with so-called the wants of Horus. Actually, I think more or less you know what I'm talking about. This. I'm talking about this interesting or strange cylinders which 
um, you can see in the hands of statues of pharaohs and priests all over the world where you can uh, encounter the statue from ancient Egypt. Or if you open the books, everywhere you can see it. So from the beginning, I was interested what it is about. And later, uh, we came to not only understanding, we did scientific research about this instrument. And what we have found, and what I'd like to share with you as the person, as the specialist who is engaged in this process for the last 25 years, actually 27. And I do not think that we can, found, we can find another specialist who knows more about it than me, so it so happened. Excuse me for these words, <laughs> just take it as it is, but in any way, the instrument okay. which mm -hmm. ancient used to control oncological processes. Why? Why oncological processes? And this is the reason why uh, you can see this instrument in the hands of all statues, because that was the tool of very high value. What it means? Why it's so high? Because Investigating ancient, you know, statues or pyramids, even all that books which we have got already written, we consider mm -hmm. the ancient knowledge is with pretty high. And um, uh, ancient teachers, ancient priests, they, they possessed an ability not only to talk with representatives of other planets. Well, they had wonderful capacities. And actually, some of them lived pretty long. There are many, many different interesting aspects. And so, and uh, I asked myself once, after these 27 years of investigation, tell me, Valerie, can you formulate, can you in, in a few words, the main central idea of that perfect ancient knowledge which have been embodied into the pyramids, which affected human beings by unbelievable ways, what it was, what was the mechanism embodied in the pyramids, in ancient temples, and in words, in words of Horus. And I'll tell you that all this is closely connected with what we know as time. So, any of us, if we just go into spiritual school and we start to make exercises trying to amplify, to increase our energetic capacities. And you can spend one month, two months making different exercises, feeling energy, which is good. And then maybe in one, two, three months, you start to feel the energy. And these results are fascinating any one of us. And I also came through the same stages. And later, I have found very important ancient texts which explain that what we do even today, it's, it is a very important process for our safe development. But we must take in account special genetic, pre, um, genetic capacities special genetic something which is recorded in our DNA. Otherwise, if we will do not take it in account on the way of self-cognition, on the way of interaction with the energies, we, we can encounter a lot of problems. And that ancient text is clearly saying and gives idea that this 
genetic uh, fact, let's say like this, it, uh, this is the program embodied in all human beings. It's embodied in all extraterrestrials. Even this text mm -hmm. says mm -hmm. that the God whom we know is subjected to the same law because as ancient text says, long, 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 long ago, billions of years ago, someone who embodied in himself the laws of time and space, male and female beginning, created, first of all, this universe, and a lot of his own projections through which he started to analyze the uh, environment where he found himself. What it means? So, if we take any of us, and I ask you, do you remember your former life? Sure, you don't. Do you know your main mission? Mm -hmm. We just have any idea about this. The same, maybe it sounds strange, but the same happened with God, because when he made this transition from one level to a higher level, he found himself in the environment which he actually had to learn. And as ancient text says, he created these projections, and through the eyes of his projections, actually through your eyes, he started to investigate this nature, all the surrounding. That's why ancient text says it's a very important idea that from your eyes now God is looking on me and he's also looking through my eyes on you and just creating different situations in different uh, times, in a different space, just giving us different chances through us, he is investigating this world. And here is a very important moment. In the ancient Egyptian tradition, you can see so-called uh, the, the boat of a million years, the boat of Ra, you remember? And inside of the boat, there are nine gods, which actually representing nine energetical bodies of the God and the human being. That's why in ancient texts, all gods has a human body, because they wanted to explain that this is not a, they were not trying to tell you that gods, you know, so were so simple that they have a physical body. No, this is information that all which is described has direct connection with the human body. And when the boat of Ra started to flow, and this is the symbol of flowing, of movement in time and space, it means it had connection with the physical processes. Around this boat of Ra, you can see the snake, huge snake called Apophis, and he is going to bite, to eat up the god together with nine gods together uh, with him. So. It means that this Apophis represents someone even higher than our God. So, just giving you an idea where you can see these scriptures. I just come. I just finish this uh, this part with idea that that was the text giving a very important um, uh, idea about that. When we go into the schools and we started to create our abilities, we are doing it step by step. So, uh, when you start to feel the energy, it means that your first energetical body got into a resonance with the first energetical body of the Earth, which is good. Then, when you go on developing your abilities, you start to get into resonance with your second energetical body, with the second energetical body of the Earth. And here, your visions 
starts to activate. You can see, you know, creatures, uh, energetical beings, and so on and so on. And then, automatically, coming along the way of this development, you go into the resonance with your third energetical body, with the third energetical body of the Earth, step by step. And then you are getting cancer. <laughs> this important moment. Immediately after that, on 2004, we tried to receive all important information for us, calling any spiritual schools, official, non-official, all over Russia. And we found out that the most interesting, very active uh, spiritual teachers like clairvoyants and people who uh, developed disabilities and were working daily, especially extra sensitive peoples and, he and healers, they got cancer and died between seven to ten years after finishing the, the, the courses. We have been so, you know, astonished that we made a bit more investigation and then it was like a cold shower for us that well-known teachers like Krishna, uh, Krishna Murdi, Ramana Maharishi, Vivekananda, Shri Aurobindo, my Mira, all of them, they died from cancer. You see? So, working deeper and deeper, trying to understand what this ancient text is talking about, what can we filter out for us and to step over the border of death, as ancient text says. This text explains that we must synchronize our energetical bodies with energetical bodies of the Earth, Mother Earth, not one by one, but all three simultaneously as the one. Then we step over the border of death. And that was the critical moment, most important for me, when I concentrated on ancient technologies, because the tools which we call the wands of Horus, that was exactly the tools to synchronize these energetical bodies, first three energetical bodies of a human being, with the first three energetical bodies of the planet Earth, which is the mother for us, as the one. And then pyramids, they were the instruments to synchronize all seven energetical bodies of a human being with seven energetical bodies of the planet Earth. And this is a very important moment for those who is deeply interested in what is pyramid, what is the mechanism why pyramids are working, what principles are embodied into the pyramids. Here, again, I'd like to address you to ancient texts, and that text says that human being, the planet Earth, and the universe has the same, one and the same similar structure. So we have a physical body, the planet Earth is a physical body. We have seven energetical bodies with a projection in our organ, in our body. This is the endocrine organs. The same with planet Earth. So planet Earth, this is the source of energy for us. So we must synchronize ourselves with the planet Earth. So the pyramid have been constructed exactly first embodying seven level structure of a human body. Actually, in reality, we have not seven energetical bodies, we have 12. But only seven of them have a projection in the physical body. This is so-called endocrine organs. This is the reason why constructing or producing or building the pyramid physical instrument to influence physical body through energetical bodies. You need to take into account 
these seven bodies. That's why all pyramids, they are seven layered system. Even at the moment when you start to make a project on paper, you should divide the paper on seven layers and you should construct the pyramid according to this principle. And then, this is not only one, then you should take into account something which is critical aspect, like an energetical pulsation of the planet Earth. Planet Earth has kind of an energetical source in the core of the planet. And this energetical source is pulsating. And these very important energetical waves, impulses, they are stimulating all living and even non-living objects on the planet Earth. And this is a very special rhythm belonging to our planet. And this rhythm is exactly one impulse in 54 minutes. So, Yang or Ba impulse 54, Ka or In impulse 54, together 108. And then, it's clear for you, 108 is a very specific, very, in many religions, it's a very important number. I just gave you a very brief idea. So, then you should take and calculate the basement of your pyramid according to this principle, then the ones of Horus and the pyramids starts to use, starts to influence your body, stimulating, first of all, then synchronizing with the energetical impulses and rhythms of the planet Earth. It's important because within your life, by the reasons of stresses, wrong food, or well, whatever, we are getting off the rhythm of the planet Earth. So when we are in the rhythm, it's the same when the tuner is tuned in a proper frequency, you can hear, you know, the voice from the uh, receiver. The same with us. If we are tuned, we can get information from the planet Earth, informational field, from Akasha Chronic. You can uh, conver converse, you can investigate the planet Earth quite on different basis. Not like our science does. Actually, if you want to understand how the mineralists uh, constructed, you, you take a mineral, you break it, then you analyze it and say, okay, this mineral consists of a certain number of elements. Nobody will allow us to destroy universe or planet to investigate. So this is the wrong approach. And by this way, maybe I did it pretty long, but I just gave you ideas that the middle idea, middle most important knowledge and mechanism is in the time uh, processes. Because when we speak about yin yang or like Baka in ancient Egypt, we think man and female beginning, that's all right, that's true, but one important aspect is lost. This is two encounter flaws of time. So if you balance the time in your organism and keep it balanced for at least two weeks, then you um, conservate your inner time. And then the time in outer space and inside starts to run a bit different. So it means from this moment you can live 100 years, 200 years, 300 years, and so on. And so the main idea is the time. And then what is also important, that uh, I'd like to explain it to you by a very special way. Because otherwise I need to write a big article with a lot of examples, but shortly I can do it like this. Imagine that uh, you are sitting before me 
like it's a kind of a hier hierarchic school, like it was thousands of years ago. Okay, so and um, guru or teacher tries to explain to you the mechanisms embodied in all these technologies, ancient instruments, and so on. The main idea is that, first of all, a human being is unique in the whole universe. Then, your body consists of millions and millions of cells. And each cell has its own vibration. Then, groups of cells, they are forming a certain organ. And each organ has its own vibration. Then, these organs, they are forming conglomerates of organs and organism where all these millions of cells has its own unique vibration. Then, we are sitting together with you right here, and while we are talking with you this already 10 or 15 minutes, we already covered thousands of kilometers flying through the space where each part of the universe has its own capacities, own energetic and magnetic electromagnetic fields. All the sun is affecting solar. Our sun is uh, reacting. And this unbelievably huge amount of influences are affecting us. What <coughs> I'm going to convey to you, what is the main idea? The ancient text says, do not look for simple decisions. It is impossible to create like a computer which will be able to read the vibrations of each cell and then analyze it, take into account our flight through the universe and give us the result on what organism should do with all deviations from norm which we have because only our endocrine and immune system as ancient teacher says knows what we need at this particular moment so what we actually should do we must only empower the impulses of inner doctor of our inner biological um, in, in the endocrine system, you understand what I mean. And here, this wants of Horus, that was the absolutely amazing um, decision and instrument. So, what what is actually the wants of Horus? This is two metallic tubes, copper and zinc. In ancient times, they made copper with gold zinc with silver. Inside, they put quartz crystals. So, when you take the quartz crystals in copper and zinc, but copper and zinc, this is the so-called so halvanic pier, immediately between these two cylinders appears the difference of potential up to 1.5 volt. And crystals inside starts to vibrate. Here, in the middle of the palm, and you can, you can see this in many ancient texts, there is an eye. What means eye? This is the projection of our brain. So, when all of you, when you come to anyone and start to, you know, like, to test, to feel the energy of human being, you know, you know, you're trying to find out what organs are, are getting out of the norm. We think mostly that we are doing this by hands, but in reality, we are doing it by brains, because this is the projection of the brain, actually of hypothalamus and hypophysis, very responsible for the third eye. This is the reason why we have here the third eye. So, when you take the ones, with a difference of potential, when this difference affecting the crystal inside, and this crystal starts to vibrate 
in a very wide range, all signals sent by our endocrine system and nervous system to correct deviations from norm are empowered by crystals and our aura starts to vibrate with the frequency dictated by our inner doctor. And this is absolutely amazing, you know, mechanism. So, talking about... Uh, well, from Sorry, this is, point, could you hear that question? Is the inner doctor the thyroid? Uh, yes, actually. So synchronizing is, that. Yeah, because any organs, any of, of organs, are the part of immune and endocrine system. And this is the reason why also, uh, when you, for example, start to, to build a pyramid for yourself, I think many of you think or the, you would like to build a pyramid, but you would like to make it in a proper way on the level of knowledge of ancient Egyptian, you know, architects and priests. So I'm giving you idea another how to tune the pyramid perfectly on you, for example, Sandra. Just take your account. You want to build for your pyramid for yourself, okay? You want to build pyramid as the source of energy which would help you to correct deviations from norm, right? Then you would like to uh, synchronize your energetical body with energetical body of the earth. Why? Because you would like to get access to an uh, energy source of the God, actually of the God. And you are, as the ancient text says, you are a projection of the God. It means you, between you and the God, there is a very special, unique channel. So your pyramid should be tuned on this channel vibration. How to do it? You need to know the distance between chakras. Exact distance, because this is the tuning tool. So, and I ask you, how can you measure it? Because you need weather to see, clearly to see, this uh, green, um, like balls in the body, because this is another mistake which you can encounter in many, many uh, teachings, because even Eastern tradition talking about the energetical structure of human being said that we have seven chakras and each chakra has its own color. Unfortunately, this mistake, because all chakras has one and the same color, and this color is green. Important are the distances. Mm -hmm. How can you do it? Ancient, they used also the tools to activate the sensitivity and clear voice. For this, uh, they used the wands of Horus with so-called um, uncombined natural iron. In one case, in another case, they used the meteoritic iron. That's the one so in the air. Yeah, this is Bia. Yes. What, you, see, you know, uh, we, all people who have been working, I myself did it. And I tell you that I needed approximately three months just keeping them in, in hand, sleeping with them and working with them after what I started to feel this like energetic impulses coming from chakras. Now mm -hmm. I can calculate the distance just having my hands. Easy. And I don't need any equipment. So I do the same what ancient priests did. And there are some cases when people use the bia. And then I remember one case. It was the, with a man uh, from uh, uh, Australia when he when he has got bia and used it for for a couple of months, and then he was trying to find me and ask the question what he can do because he was a little bit in panic. And when I asked, what happened? Can you explain? The, that man says, now I started to feel the energetic vibration of each person 
which is coming on a distance of 30 meters, three, zero. He says, when a person is coming, I know what he is thinking about, I feel his illnesses and many other things. So, by this way, maybe long way, but I try to explain what that instrument, the wands of Horus, are, uh, why they have been used, and actually this, the knowledge about these wands of Horus have been given by extraterrestrials, which, as I said, they were very scientifically uh, tuned, let's say, that was a highly developed civilization. This is the reason why we should take into account very seriously all that ancient knowledge and use it now for our daily life. What and this is, yeah. this is just the beginning. Uh, right, so that's Egyptian side, but what about uh, the other dismissed, because history is manipulated anyways, so there's a lot of attention on the Egyptian side, but let's, let's sort of look into the Hyperborea, Mount Meru uh, civilization, so do you, do you, is the tech from that side, from that civilization? Well, uh, when we are talking about our civilization, and if we prefer to be on the right way of understanding, uh, and when we're especially talking about the possible existence of different civilizations on the planet Earth, which had affected our development today, we should take into account only those civilization, the last one, who had a real connection with us. Actually, there were few civilizations on the planet Earth, and Hyperborea, which have been situated on the northern pole, played a very special role at that ancient time, because uh, at that ancient time, Hyperborea was situated on the northern pole, that was a very special place with a very powerful crack in the crust, with a very powerful energetical beam. And because of these uh, very specific uh, reasons, approximately 18,000 years ago, the first landing of those who lived on Mars and Maldek took place there, in, uh, in the area of Hyperborea, actually. Yeah. Now, the central part of Hyperborea is under the ice, and this is the Greenland. Then, as ancient text says, Hyperborean started to civilize all other civilization. Hyperborean civilized uh, Atlantis. Hyperborea then civilized Sumerian civilization and all other civilization. And what is interesting, if you read very carefully all that uh, saved texts, which actually we have got even today, we can read them, there you can see that those from Hyperborea, they moved from the northern pole right after the... Um, this global catastrophe, they moved to South Pole, and there their traces disappear. So from here, we can give you just a very short hint that there were another civilization on the planet Earth situated on the South Pole, and which played decisive role in the development and the history of our civilization. So, now, shortly, about actual number or amount of civilization which have, or which had an influence on our civilization. First, Hyperborea, Northern Pole, then Atlantis, you know where it was situated, then civilization of the uh, Pacific Ocean, we call it Pasifida, huge one, disappeared. Then another one, South Pole. South Pole is so critically important that you can find very few traces, very few words written in ancient texts about it. 
But again, I'd like to point out that in the history and destiny of our civilization, this South Pole civilization played a decisive role. And Nazis, who maybe you remember the story of uh, a special group um, of Nazis who uh, have been financed uh, by government, by Nazi government, I'm talking about Annen Erbe, who's, who'd made a lot of expedition to the South Pole, and as Nazi document says, they found there uh, and the, the, uh, the, how to say the rhyme, it's something, it's a very special place on the earth where gods, gods are living, let's say like this. And then you remember again, 1947, the expedition of Admiral Byrd, American military expedition, which moved to South Pole, but then have been attacked by UFOs, lost a lot of ships, and had to return back. Just, I'm just giving you ideas about this number. Absolutely, and, yeah. And what is important for us, that this year in Russia, we started to publicize the information about this South Pole civilization, which actually have been found in ancient Tibetan texts, in Egyptian texts, and the other sources, plus those documents of Ananerba, which Russians so has got when they occupied Germany. Because now these documents are in Moscow, and a certain part of these documents is available for investigation. You can even find some in the internet. So now we are living in a very special, very interesting moment. Uh, I wanted to ask about the timeline uh, question. We have 15 more minutes, Valeri. Thank you so much. So uh, the uh, act actual order of uh, Pyramids, uh, so to speak, uh, uh, should be then uh, the hyper hyperborea. Uh, Bosnian pyramid is the eldest, apparently. Gailash is connected to it. And what is the connection with the Romanian Sphinx? Well, uh, I'd like to make some corrections. Yeah. So if we are talking about the most ancient uh, pyramidal structures which have been built by very special way that was a, a huge mountains situated on a special energetic areas like acupuncture points of the planet earth and then these hills have been cut down so that those who did it they they got a form of the pyramid and then all this uh, pyramid, they had a very special orientation and played a decisive role. The main and the oldest structure like this on the planet Earth is the Kailash. Kailash. Uh, yeah, Kailash, and nobody now cannot tell you how old this system is. The system, this Kailash, is much, much older than the pyramid in Bosnia. But the pyramid is in Bosnia, I would say, this is first of all a pyramid, which is active up to today. And this instrument played so important role in the energetical system of the planet, because one of the role, this is so-called GPS marker, on one hand, the pyramid played why? What it means, GPS marker, uh, shortly, when somebody is flying to the planet Earth, they do not fly directly. They make a transition from one dimension to another. It's like, it's kind of a jump. So when they make this jump, they need to know exactly where they will find themselves next moment, because they need to take into account the pressure of um, energetical electromagnetic field of the Earth to use it to keep uh, the UFO in a stable position. So for that, they need to use this navigational uh, uh, GPS marker. And this pyramid played, first of all, this role. And then this pyramid also 
uh, is, was, and actually now is gathering information from surrounding and then sends this information through this beam which have been detected scientifically somewhere. Okay? So, and why I'm talking about this pyramid, like for today, it's most important because just 15 years ago, 15,000 years ago, the, so the northern pole of the planet was quite on a different place. And 13,669 years ago, after the asteroid impact, the, um, the axis of rotation had been changed for 15 degrees, and northern pole moved. So energetically, um, the, the pyramids which have been oriented on the former northern pole, they lost energetic charger, let's say like this. So, and you see that somebody reconstructed this pyramid and they put on top of the Bosnian pyramid another layer of the blocks and reoriented this pyramid on the present northern pole, you see? So, when we are talking about the pyramids and the most important pyramids, we should always keep in mind that these pyramids have been forming a special system which have been situated in spiral and formed spiral from South Pole to the Northern Pole just to gather information and to arrange the system for informational interaction inside the solar system and outside. And at the same time, that pyramid have been installed in a special acupuncture point. Yeah. So, for example, when we are talking about Kailash, Kailash is hypothalamic hypophys organ, which is receiving energy and information, then uh, transforming it and sending through energetical system channels of the Earth to the different location, different pyramids on the planet Earth. Absolutely, because, uh, you know, wrong questions have been asked, you know, who built them, why they built them, and so forth. But the questions that you're asking is then how, why they were built in these certain acupunctural locations and why they were built in those shapes and forms. So these are the questions that will lead to answers, these two yeah. fundamental questions. Yeah, right. be, be, re, always remember that all the system and the pyramids should be constructed in connection, in a certain similarity with the human body. So always keep in mind, if we have the body and the skin and so-called very important acupuncture points, the same with the planet Earth. So if you influence correctly, our body to acupuncture point, you can heal diseases, okay? The same with the planet. If you put a pyramid at a certain acupuncture point, you can damp down seismic activity. You can use the energy of the earth, but not just the energy. We, you can call it the energy of the consciousness, spiritual energy of the planet earth as the living cosmic organism. But this is, in principle, very important. Very good. So we have four minutes left, and I'm going to just, you know, sort of like give yay or nay answers, yes or no. So the planetary defense system that has been protecting planet Earth, Gaia, so far, so is it now, you said we live in special times. When are these dates running from? Because uh, yesterday Peter Paget was talking about that it starts today up till 18th of March and last time. Well, I'm just trying to get a yes or no answer. Is the defense system planetary on still? And are these dates running till? It's active up till today. And you remember this huge explosion over Chelyabinsk on 2013? So that was the case when this installation shut down this uh, meteorite. So, uh, and I'd like to tell you that today we have a lot of videos and scientific interesting information which opens up the reality of existence of installation which is defending system 
which defends our planet from mostly those meteorites and small asteroids which are carrying dangerous bacteria. That's the case. That's why the system is destroying the meteorites on daily. It works daily. So Only what we on. need to Yes, it, okay. it works up till today. And it's technical device spread uh, in, in some places on the planet Earth. Uh, fortunately, uh, in Russia and Siberia, we have these devices right, right on the ground. So you can go, you can touch, you can see, you can feel. There is another base, huge base, but it's under the water near Easter Island. Also very active, but it's three or four kilometers deep. So it's impossible to investigate. In Russia, it's clear. And our military has already started investigation of the system. The other very important, by the way, uh, installation, very soon, within the following few years, will appear on the bottom of Aral Sea. You know that on the south part of Russia, we have so-called Aral Sea. And the water of Aral now is going away, less and less and less. And very soon you will see how a, a technical device will start to appear, will rising from the water. And when this device will appear and will start to investigate it, um, we will understand a lot about the principles of multidimensional transition from one dimension to another. This is the key device which have been used and up till today used for this transition from one dimension to another. And by the way, crop circles all over the world are closely connected with this device in RLC. Wow, thank you very much. Miles, talk to me, what's, what's going on? Do we have time for questions? Oh, thank you, Miles. Yeah, thank you, Valeri. Miles. I'd like to tell you, I'd like to tell you, Valeri, thank you. Thank you for your hospitality. Thank you for your friendship. And also, I'd like to announce that I think in one month, my book called The Pyramids, uh, The Legacy of the Gods, will be published in English language. And you can get it. It's going to be a full-color book and very cheap. By the way, it's gonna, we're going to sell it together with insoles, Egyptian insoles with copper and zinc inserts as the set. Thank Excellent. you very much. Thank you very much, Valeri from St. Petersburg in Russia. Good day good. and good night. Thank you. From Thank Maya. you so Remember, much. We love you. We love you all. Love, from big Russia. love hug, everybody. Goodbye. Bye-bye. See you next time. Oh